this is going to be your guide to using Cinderace in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Libro. That is effectively what this entire guide boils down to, but Protean and Libro were nerfed. And that just makes things really weird. Also, the Greninja video is going to be pretty similar, and that's already similar to the Meowskareta video, because now all of these Pokemon have effectively become the same thing. Protean and Libro only change the types once now, which creates a lot of weird interactions, especially for dual-type Pokemon, so I guess that's going to be more important in the Greninja video, but now all of these are effectively the same Pokemon, so comparing Cinderace to Meowskareta is kind of how it breaks down. Now the stat comparison between Meowskareta and Cinderace is where things get spooky and kind of weird, because we have fully evolved starter Pokemon based stats. There's not going to be too much diversity between them. We also can't do something like a Ultra Beast moveset that's going to max out one stat and then sacrifice all the others. So we have Pokemon that just look really similar. Uh, Meowskareta with its own weird speed creep, 123. So creeping 122 to creep 121. Cinderace kind of falling under 120, which is a crucial speed tier. Not as much in Generation 9 because it's like bulky meta. But then like comparing it to Inteleon and other Pokemon, just like really weird speed stuff coming down. And then we have the comparison between Cinderace and Meowskareta being 116 attack versus 110 attack. So it just kind of seems like Meowskareta is better. But then we get into the moveset and then Cinderace becomes a lot better because Meowskareta, it just has Flower Trick. Now Flower Trick always crit, so it has 105 effective base power. Cinderace is going to have 120, so we're getting about 20% more damage, and that really matters, especially if we're going like Terra Fire or boosting with an item, and the weird thing is, like, Meowskareta's damage just falls off, which is why it's a very underwhelming Pokemon, and the best thing can do is just be like a really fast trick anti-lead, and then again, it just kind of falls apart because it doesn't have any damage, so Cinderace, like, still brings the damage threat, and... It's not as threatened by the Meowskareta because of the typing into speed interactions, so Cinderace just kind of winning out. And now this is where the dual typing interactions with like Protean get a bit more interesting because Cinderace is nerfed less than Meowskareta. That if Meowskareta goes into a typing, it just loses dual type. It loses one of those typings, whereas for like old Protean, you would just have all the typings. So you effectively got stab on every type, so dual typing didn't matter. Now just going like shifting around monotyping is effectively how you're going to play Cinderace. So one way of looking at Generation 9 Protean is that you are effectively just these stats with any typing that doesn't have to terrestrialize, because that's what terrestrialization does. Now it makes it to where like, oh, this is just, this Pokemon can now be the niche that doesn't exist in another typing with this bundle of stats and potential moveset. And that's kind of how I did the Meowskareta guide to get the most out of Meowskareta. But again, Cinderace, because it's not like sacking any dual typing it can just kind of do whatever but then the terrestrialization interactions get really weird so let's say we have fire type cinderace with libero but we terrestrialize turn one into like a different terra typing fairy well now we are effectively a fire fairy dual type pokemon libero doesn't activate to overwrite terrestrialization because terrestrialization is just hard your pokemon's that type you can't soak it you can't do anything you're now permanently welded to that type so now it's like, oh, I, so Libro just doesn't exist in that situation. And then like even into a fairy Terra Blast or something. So you actually have to like use the move first, become that typing that you want to have. Then you terrestrialize on the next one to either double down into that typing. Like for example, if you want to get like full Steel Stab, you go Iron Head, Libro, your Steel type Pokemon. So you get 1.5 Stab. And then you terrestrialize into Steel to now get the double damage, the effective adaptability, as a Steel-type Pokemon with this stat bundle and potential moveset. And then that's like where the moveset interactions come to play because Libro can only become what Cinderace has. All of that for a Pokemon with 116 attack, 119 speed. It's really the base powers that salvage the Cinderace because, yeah, Pyro Ball with this and like Life Orb or Choice Band is where you actually have damage numbers that actually matter. So because we have a type-shifting Pokemon that's going for good coverage, like, you need to be crushing it on super effective hits. But if the thing that you're going up against doesn't get KO'd by the super effective hit, you are in some serious trouble. So that's what I want to do for, like, this kind of look right here. So we have Garganasol, a very naturally dense, bulky Pokemon that's going to be hit point investing. If we have Life Orb, if we have Adamant, if we have Libero, and we're throwing a super effective hit, how much damage do we do? 
it's 70%. Again, like, you have to have the steel type set up to then go into the terrestrialization and then get the extra amount of damage on the Pokemon. And it's, like, decent KO onto a Garganasalt that doesn't have defense investment. Even if it's, like, some kind of mixed Garganasalt, KO isn't super reliable. So it just kind of, like, shows the damage that we're trying to get into if we're doing something like the steel terrestrialization double steel cinderace not necessarily what you have to do or want to do it's mostly just kind of showing if you are doing this type shifting and you're trying to go for that coverage you need to be able to take on like everything that's possibly going to happen with that pokemon kind of works kind of doesn't and you are giving up like a lot of extra damage and stuff like that and then in some cases it doesn't even matter so why do you have iron head for fairy type pokemon well what are some of the more predominant fairy type pokemon flutterman Pyroball just KOs anyways. Now getting to the point where you're like safely dealing with a Pokemon that outspeeds you and can provide some threat, that's a different story. And we can actually start talking about that because now it's speed tiers. So we have Jolly Nature Cinderace, we have Adamant Nature Cinderace. How does that interact? What's going on here? Well, for uh, an Adamant Cinderace, it's actually really interesting that a Jolly Max Speed Invested Garchomp. Now this doesn't exist anymore. Everything is like Adamant. If it's doing any speed investment and then there's like wall breaking and choice band but the idea of a scarf chomp is just completely dead since that is the most free pokemon to set up against or just wall out with all the power creep but just kind of like an idea of like okay traditionally as some kind of reference point what do we have you can just go adamant max speed and you outspeed 102. so that's a pretty safe and healthy place to be while getting that 10 percent extra damage and then on your high base power on something like the pyroball that's going to be really nice and then that that just kind of works both ways. So you can like, what's Jolly going to change those outspeeds on when there's really no predominant Pokemon in 110, 115? You know, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is played on two extremes. You have like the 90 base power, and you have the over 130 base power, and nothing in between. So if you're under 130, you're just playing for that 90, and I guess it's just kind of like safe to have the 102, 100 beneficial nature outspeed if you have it. So. That's it right there. You just go out of my nature and then you try to crush everything on damage and coverage. And Libero can do some nice things where it's like, oh, high jump kick is just a higher damage pyro ball. Getting a super effective hit into stab is also really nice and kind of opening it up. And then you have like terrestrialization options. So yeah, you can change around your stab and you can customize your Cinderace like that. And sometimes it has good effect. Now, because like I said, there's just like this disparity in speed tiers, you can also just go for the flame charge focus sash into blaze. Because, like, Libero, if you want to just stay on fire for, like, your highest damage move, you're not doing anything. You're going from Mono Fire to Libero activating Pyro Ball into Fire. And if you go Terra Fire from there, you have done nothing. So you have no ability, which is bad. So if you're actually, like, trying to do Terra Fire, or even, like, you don't even have to Terra Fire. Because this also lets you just kind of Terrastalize on the first turn. So, yeah, Terrastal first turn, well, Libero is not activating, and then you're just stuck fire. So... Terrastal first turn blaze means you either have like the adaptability damage of the double fire or you can also go into some kind of extra terra type. I'm just like randomly throwing out one here and then you can also use that for additional coverage on the terra blast. And now you can actually like do something that's very niche to the meta or opening up your coverage for something that you need. So like I said, even though steel sounds nice against a uh, fairy type Pokemon, they're generally going to have a lower defense. And if you're going blaze, fire, flame charge, some kind of boost, you're in a pretty good spot. So that's kind of where the focus sash comes in. You go flame charge. Well, now you can use the focus sash to absorb any hit. You flame charge. You're now faster than everything. And then blaze is there for free. So now you're getting 50% damage. So now you're getting 50% damage and just doing crazy Mondo damage. And that's kind of where you want to be on the Power Ball. You got coverage, you have potential Terra, or not. Again, you can just go fire and then use like a natural coverage option that Cinderace has. And you just kind of win that way. And that's kind of that, like, that's what I've got for Cinderace. You do this. You do some Terra type that you feel you need to round out your coverage or adapt into the meta. And then you just try to one shot everything on Power Ball otherwise. Other options for the Cinderace, instead of the Life Orb, you can just go Choice Band, and then you try to play a hit and run. I think that turn, like switch moves are really bad, like you turn Volt Switch. Those are generally just traps that are going to hurt your coverage and not really give you much of anything. So if you just like switch into a bulky Pokemon that can resist anyways, that's just going to be fine for having extra coverage that might matter more. Or actually not even might, will matter more inside the game than being stuck on like a U-turn or a Volt Switch or something. 
So yeah, the choice band damage, like you just you just crush on that pyro ball, and maybe that is where you can just go like, okay, I got Terra Fire Pyro Ball if I need that damage. If not, I save my Terra for another Pokemon. Now we have Libero Stab onto other things that are going to provide some serious damage for the situation. That's gonna be pretty good. Uh, bulk up is an option for like other kinds of Cinderace, but again, you just have better wall breakers on your team instead of like using that turn to bulk up. So that Pokemon's gonna come in harder banded and be fine. And Cinderace is more threatened by like the sweeping Pokemon that are faster than it. So catch that or just play all rounder Cinderace and you're good to go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.